In this video, we'll learn how DNS is used to help us navigate and find websites on the internet. So what I want you to start thinking of DNS as is kind of like texting people. So you probably have a bunch of people that you text, but you probably couldn't tell me any of their phone numbers. And that's because when you text them, you just put in their name and the phone does the work of looking up the number that that name is associated with. Well, that's essentially how the internet works. So humans really aren't that great at remembering numbers. And that's why our phone basically tracks, hey, if we want to text mom, for example, I've got mom's number right in the cell phone and, and the message will go to her. Well, if I want to go to Google, I can pretty easily remember google.com, but it would be a lot harder for me to remember 142.251.40.196. That's the IP address. But basically, that's how the computers work. They communicate using these numbers, using these IP addresses. So DNS is a system that is going to allow us to type in these fully qualified domain names or FQDNs, and it is going to query and find out, well, what's the IP address? And then it's going to return that result to my computer. So let's walk through this. Here's my computer and let's say that I type in a website. And the address I type in is www.trendertests.com. Well, my computer has a TCP IP stack. Maybe it's retrieved some addressing information from DHCP. And in the last lesson, we looked at the ipconfig-all command and we saw our addressing information. And one of the things that we got from DHCP was a DNS server. So you can see the addresses of my DNS servers for my computer here. And so if I'm trying to get to a website, like for example, www.trainertests.com, my computer is going to issue a query. It's going to send out a request to the configured DNS server and the DNS server is going to receive that request and, and hopefully the DNS server already has a result. Right? So hopefully this DNS server already knows about trainertests.com. But if it doesn't, then my internet service provider has their own DNS servers and we can go further up the DNS ladder from there. Typically, we don't have to know a whole lot about that stuff. But basically, eventually I'll reach an authoritative DNS server and I'll get a result for this query. So let's take a look at our command prompt again. And I'm just going to type in the command nslookup. And nslookup is going to show me, hey, here's my DNS server, my default server. And I'm going to actually exit this and I'm going to type in the command nslookup www.trainertests.com and let's see what the result is. So it's giving me the IP address of that system and it's giving me a non-authoritative answer, which means the answer is coming from a DNS server that's owned by my organization. It's not coming from an authoritative DNS server. Let's try something that I've never looked up before. So I'm just going to pick something kind of random here. I'm going to do an NS lookup of www.hammers.com. Sure, let's go with that. And notice, yep, it's doing another DNS query and it's retrieving the IP addresses that we can use to reach that site. So DNS is essentially speed dial for your computer. You can type in these easy to remember fully qualified domain names and your computer will generate a query that'll go to your DNS server and it'll retrieve the IP address that we're going to send that traffic to. And that allows your computer to establish a connection to that address. Let's take a moment to do a quick review of some of the key concepts that we've just learned. We've learned that DNS can be used to translate a fully qualified domain name to an IP address. For example, trainertests.com. If I put that address in my web browser, my computer is going to generate a DNS request to obtain the IP address that that traffic should be sent to. It's sort of like speed dial or texting somebody based on the name that you've put into your phone. 
it allows you to not have to remember all of these IP addresses and to give a service that will actually supply the IP address when a DNS request is issued. And we saw how you can use the NS lookup command to issue DNS queries from your computer.